first mid-price electric car. Earlier this week, Musk took us on a tour of his Silicon Valley factory. And this is the first time network cameras were allowed inside the Model 3 production line. Going to look at the batteries. We divided the general assembly into three parts. And the middle part is where we put the, uh, the battery pack and, and motor in. And so we call that marriage. Elon, what's the hardest part? Pre-marriage, marriage, post-marriage? Right now, marriage is the hardest part. Marriage is the hardest part. Elon Musk's relationship with outside analysts and investors is also going through a rough patch these days. I'm definitely under stress. So if I seem like I'm not under stress, then I want to be clear, I'm definitely under stress. In the past month, Tesla has issued a voluntary recall of 123,000 of its older Model S vehicles dealt with a fatal crash of a vehicle equipped with its semi-autonomous driving system and suffered a downgrade of its credit status on Wall Street. The Model 3, still in your mind, is the face and the future of the company, is it not? Yes, absolutely. But the most important thing on his mind these days is solving production delays for the Tesla's new Model 3 sedan here at his massive factory in Silicon Valley. You started saying we'll do 5,000 a week, then, okay, that didn't work out, we'll do 2,500 a week. And now it's a little over 2,000 a week. Does that trouble you? Yeah, no, that's true. I need to figure out how to be better, and then we can be better at meeting goals. Tesla's future is tied to this car. When Musk introduced it last summer, the Model 3 was billed as the company's first mid-price, mass-produced electric car, accessible to middle-class customers, not just the super wealthy. You said to your team, mm -hmm. everybody get ready to meet the demand. We're going to be in production hell. Yes. But you didn't expect this kind of production hell, or did you? Um, no, it's worse than I thought. Why is that? Why is it harder? What happened? We got complacent about some of the things that we felt were our core technology. We put too much new technology into the Model 3 all at once. Mm -hmm. That this, this, this should have been staged. High tech goes in the cars, but it also builds them. This is widely regarded as one of the most robotics-driven auto assembly lines on the planet. Elon, part of the thing I heard about the Model 3 is that there's too many robots. That maybe yeah, yeah, I agree. You, do, you think so, too? That yeah. maybe you need more people in here working. We do. In some cases, the robots actually slow the production, right? Yes, they did. We had this crazy complex uh, network of conveyor belts, and it was not working. So we got rid of that whole thing. This is cool, Elon. Yeah. Realizing it needed an overhaul, Musk personally took over the Model 3 production line at the beginning of April. They're aiming for really extreme levels of precision uh, more than any other vehicle in the world. He says he has resorted to pulling all-nighters at the plant. When things get really intense, I don't have time to go home and shower and change, so I just sleep here. I want to see. Where is that? Oh, uh, yeah. So I want to see. Um, I mean, it's pretty boring overall, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually cold in here too. Yeah, I like it cold. So you have a, you like it cold? I sleep on the couch over there. So you're just laying here on yeah. the couch? Yeah. Last time I was here I actually slept literally on the floor because the couch was too narrow. Yeah, I was going to say. And Elon, I have to say it's not even a comfortable couch either. No, it's terrible. <laughs> this is a, not a good couch. What does the number say for the last seven days? What is the number? 2071. You're pleased with that? Yeah. For the time being? Yeah. Musk feels like all the overtime is paying off. And now he says the Model 3 line is back on track. And we're able to un unlock some of the critical things that were holding us back um, from reaching 2,000 cars a week. But since then, we've continued to do 2,000 cars a week. Do you think that this is sustainable? This pace yeah. is sustainable? Yeah. So we'll probably have, I don't know, a three or four-fold increase in Model 3 output in the, in the second quarter. But Musk critics have heard predictions like those before. <laughs> a future the automaker has yet to reach. But Elon, you may be one of the few people to see it because a lot of people looking at you don't see it. The problem with people have a lot of the analysts is that they kind of look in the rearview mirror instead of looking at the front windscreen. What do you mean by that? This has very frequently been um, why people have um, underestimated Tesla because they would look at Tesla's, um, uh, what Tesla's done in the past and use that as proxy for what we're able to do in the future. On April Fool's Day, Musk mixed his optimism with dark humor. On social media, in the midst of widespread concerns Tesla might collapse, he tweeted this. We are sad to report that Tesla has gone completely and totally bankrupt. So bankrupt, you can't believe it. You know people are nervous and they're worried. You, you are aware of that. So knowing that, why would you do an April Fool's joke that you did? 
Oh, because there were all these media articles uh, saying that Tesla's going bankrupt? Yes. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just do an April Fool's joke that we did go bankrupt. But Elon, that's not funny when people are nervous. I mean, it's April Fool's. People should, like, lighten up, okay? Like, it should be pretty obvious, I think, that um, I'm not going to joke about bankruptcy if I think it's remotely real. I'm feeling pretty optimistic about where Tesla is at this point. Like, I, at this point, I can have a clear understanding of the path out of hell. And I do not, until recently, have a clear understanding.